Hello YouTubers and fellow 3D printing enthusiasts. So after I did my recent PowerPoles distribution block project, I asked over on Patreon and I had a few of my supporters that wanted to know how I did these big deep curved corners in Tinkercad. These are called fillets in CAD design. It's spelled like fillet but pronounced like fillet. Um, they are uh, difficult to do in Tinkercad because Tinkercad doesn't have a lot of advanced features. It's a very simple modeler where you work with basic shapes, combining them and removing, uh, removing material, adding material to come up with the design that you want. So I thought, well, okay, let's do a tutorial on this. Um, it's, a, it's a trick and it's limited, but it does work uh, with some limitations, which we'll talk about. So anyway, in order to uh, talk about this and show you how to do it, we're gonna need to understand a couple of other concepts within Tinkercad, uh, solids and holes, and the align tool. So for those of you that are already familiar with those, uh, you can skip ahead to uh, this time signature in the video to get right to the curves. For the rest of you, well, let's get started. So here we are in Tinkercad. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn about shapes and holes. I'm gonna bring in a basic shape. See, this says basic shapes, and there's a cube. I'm gonna bring that in. That's usually where I start. You're gonna start with a, with a cube. Now we're gonna make a box that we're gonna to use to demonstrate making the curved corners. So I wanna make this box uh, somewhat big. Let's say it's like an experimenter's box. And we'll make it uh, 30 millimeters deep by 60 millimeters wide. And then the height of it, um, yeah, we'll go with 20. We'll make it a little box. It's 20, 20 millimeters. So this is our box. Now, um, it's solid. Right? We need, it, we need it to be hollow. We need it to be a box. Well, in Tinkercad, every shape can be a solid or a hole. See here, solid, hole. But we're going to keep this box solid. We just need another cube to make, um, to ho hollow it out with. Now I could go over and drag another cube over and set its sizes. But I always keep one hand on the keyboard, and the reason for that is it's easy to do a control C and then a control V and make a copy of our box. There we go. And I'm going to make this one, um, well, I want two millimeter walls in my box, okay? So if this wall is two millimeters and this wall is two millimeters, that means that the hole in between is four millimeters smaller. Same is true for this direction here. So I'm going to go here to the dimensions, and I'm going to make each one four millimeters smaller. So instead of 30, that becomes 26. Instead of 60, that becomes 56. Okay, now we're going to turn this into a hole. That means that this object will subtract materials from another object when you group them. I'll just overlay this like that. And I'm going to take this and draw a selection box that encompasses both to select them both. Boom. You can see these dimension points moved out to the outer perimeters of both because now they are selected together as one object. And if I come up here and I say group, you can see where our hole cut material out of the other box. Well, this is obviously not what we wanted to do. I will ungroup. What I want to do is I want to put this hole in the exact center of this box. Oh, and I also want to have a two millimeter uh, bottom, right? I don't want to hollow it out and just make it a channel. I want it to be a box. So you see, I've got my, uh, my hole selected. See this little arrow? This is for raising and lowering it off the bed. So I'm going to raise it. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing over here. Let me move this over. There we go. This number here with the line, this is showing us the distance this is from the bed, and right now it is zero. So I'm gonna make that two. There, you can see it raised up two millimeters. So now I wanna put my hole directly in the center of this box, and this brings into play the align tool. We need to select both of them. So I'm gonna draw a selection that encompasses both. Anything that's inside of this selection box gets selected. Now they're both selected again, and I'm gonna come up here, and this is the align tool here. 
I'll click that, and now you can see our alignment buttons have appeared. I want to align my hole to the box. So I'm going to click on the box to tell the align tool I want to align to it. So it doesn't move, this moves. So I'll click on the box, and you can see these buttons moved over to the box. This means align to this back edge. This means align to the center. This means align to this edge. And the same is true for these three. Aligning to this edge, aligning to the center, aligning to this edge. I want it centered, so I'm going to click the center. You can see it moved over. And I'm going to click this center. Boom. And that is how we align things, and that's going to be important when we do our curves. But now my hole is perfectly in the center of that box. So if I select them both again, and I go up here and I say group, our hole has now cut out that void in the middle of the box, and we have a box! So that's how the Align tool works, and that's the difference between shapes and holes. Shapes add material, holes remove material. So now, let's make one of these corners round. This is what we're here for, to create a fillet. Um, if we go up here to Shapes, and we search for the word meta, M-E-T-A, we will find th six things, but this one here is what we're interested in, the meta fillet. Now I'm going to take this, and I am going to drag it out here into my design. So we can see it. So what this is, if we look at it, is it's a corner with a nice curve drawn inside. That's the curve that we're going to apply to our corner here. See how this is going to work? So we need to set the dimensions of this, right? How far we want the curve to go out into the box. Now, I'm not going to go very far initially. I've got two millimeter walls, so if I just wanted to round these to make them look nice, I would go double the distance of my wall. So we'll take these dimensions and we'll change them to four. 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 So I moved it over here, but I want to align it to this corner. So we're going to use the Align tool again. So I'll draw a selection box to pick them both. We'll come up here and we'll select Align. I'll click on the box because I want to move the fillet to the box. And I'm going to align it with this edge. And then I'm going to align it with here's this dot for this edge up here. Now, there's one thing I forgot. The height of my fillet needs to match the height of the box. <laughs> so our box is 20 millimeters tall. Let's take our fillet and make it also 20 millimeters tall. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. Now I'm going to group these together, select them both, and group. And there we go. We have made a nice rounded corner on our box. Of course, that's not very deep, and it gets kind of pinched and thin there. What if we wanted to make that much deeper? You might recall in my um, power poles uh distribution block. I made these curves on the bottom very deep to match this USB charger. So how would we do that? Let's ungroup this. You might think, well, I can just make this fillet um, bigger, right? Let's say we make it... Uh, uh, let's go uh, uh, 20 millimeters by... 20 millimeters. And I will, again, align it with the box. Align to the box, this edge, and that edge. Well, you can see the problem already. If we group these... Nope, that's not going to work, is it? We have to add material before we can remove material. So let me ungroup this, and I'll show you what we're going to do. I've got my fill it. Let's select just the fill it. Okay, I've got it set to the dimensions that I want, but I need to add material first. 
So I'm going to take my fillet and I'm going to make a copy of it. Control C, Control V. Okay. Now I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to make it a solid. And then I'm going to align it to the box. So I select my solid, I select the box, I hit the align tool, click on the box. I want to move the fillet to the box. I want to align it with this edge and I want to align it with that edge. Now if I align the hole and then group them, it's just going to cut that solid out. You can see that the solid is aligned to the outer edge of the box. We need it to be aligned to the inner edge of the box. So the easy way to do that, now that we've aligned it to the outer edge, is just to move it in two millimeters. So if I come down here, my snap grid is set to one millimeter, which is what we want. I will select my solid. Move it this way so this makes more sense. Now I need to move it this way towards the left two millimeters. So I will hit the left arrow on the keyboard twice. One, two. Now I want to move it this way up two millimeters. So I'll hit the up arrow on the keyboard twice. One, two. Now it's aligned with our inner wall. I'll take my hole. I'll click on it. I'll hold down shift and click on the box because I only want to work with this and the box. I don't want to mess with this solid. That's why I did the shift click. Okay, now I'm going to hit the align tool again. I'm going to click on the box. And I'm going to align it with this edge. And I'm going to align it with this edge. There we go. Now I'll draw a selection tool that encompasses all three. And I'll group them. And there we go. Our nice curved edge. Sometimes Tinkercad gets things off just a touch, and you'll see like this seam here. It's kind of annoying. It, it, it should, should shift things precisely, but sometimes it's a little off. I'm kind of glad it happened this time so we can see it. So what's going on is our solid is not quite aligned to the inside edge. See that? And it's just a tiny bit in. We zoom right in, you can kind of see that. So what we need to do is we need to shift it. I'll ungroup. I'll set my snap grid down here to a tenth of a millimeter. And I'll click on my solid. And I'll move it to the right a tenth. And I'll move it down a tenth. Now it's definitely in the wall of the box. And when I do the group operation, it'll join up properly. Let's do this again. There we go. Now we got a nice clear scene. I don't know why it does that, but every now and then it just gets the shape off by just a tiny bit. And you'll, you'll see that seam, so you can adjust for it. I'm kind of glad it happened this time, so I can show you how that works. Another thing that I want to mention is uh, with grouping operations, they stack up. So you... You'll notice when I say ungroup now, it did not ungroup this interior hole in the box. If I click on the box and I hit ungroup again, boom, there's our interior hole. Now we've got a confused mess over here. We wouldn't be able to group these together. So what I want to do is I want to group just this hole in the box again. There. And these three are still separated. So you want to combine grouping operations if you can. For example, if we were going to then do something with each of the other corners, I wouldn't group these three and then go over and work on this corner. Because if, if later, if I wanted to adjust my corners, I'd have to ungroup three, four times. And it could get confusing if you have a lot of things going on. So what I will do is I will set up... Um, my corners ahead of time. Tinkercad's not perfect, but you can work pretty fast in it when you get used to it. Group. There, now we've got that really interesting organic shape going on. It's starting to look like a, a whale. <laughs> so anyway, that's how you make um, curved corners in Tinkercad. And they can be nice for just dressing up your model. Um, 
like in my power poles box again, up here in the upper corners, I added small fillets just to make them nice and smooth. And uh, you can use the fillet to make an inside corner smooth too, like down here at the bottom edge. I uh, added just the, the solid by itself, and you can see that that made a nice, um, nice little curve in there. It just dresses your model up and makes it look nicer. Now I said there were some limitations uh, in Tinkercad with doing these fillets, and those limitations are you cannot do multiple uh, corners that meet. You know where like on a, where you have like two that come together, or maybe a third to make a corner, like on a corner of a cube. You can't fill it all three of those in Tinkercad because the, the geometries of that meta fillet will collide at that corner and it doesn't know what to do and it just makes a mess. So that's the big limitation. You can only do it on one edge uh, in Tinkercad. It is what it is. So that's how you can simulate a fillet in uh, Tinkercad. I hope that helps you dress up your models a little bit and make things look a little nicer for you. I guess we'll see you in the uh, next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.